Hey, folks, this is Lonzo, the Godfather of West Coast Hip Hop. I'm sitting here with another hip hop legend. You might not know the face. You might not know the name, but you might. My guest today is a DJ for Bone Thugs and Harmony. They call it Position. What's up with your money? How you feeling, sir? I'm doing fantastic, man. Just sitting here, just, you know, reminiscing with some of the folks from back in the day, man. And, you know, I like talking to folks that, because unfortunately, I don't know Bone them that well. Mm -hmm. I got pictures with Lazy Bone. I've talked to Crazy Bone, but we never really hung out. They came a little after the fact. Right. So anytime I get to meet with somebody who, you know, who was from that generation or from that situation, mm -hmm. I, I, I want to talk to them. And that's what okay. we're here for today. So um, how long you been working with Bone Thug, Doc? I've been working with Bone Thugs and Harmony for 10 years now. Okay. The original DJ was DJ Ice, and uh, then... I started producing some tracks for Crazy Bone. Okay. And, um, you know, one day he just actually invited me to Australia, and I thought I was going to open up oh. and, and rap. And uh, he put down the, uh, what's the, the instant replay machine. Okay. He was like, you know how to work this? And I'm like, no, I ain't never seen that before in my life. <laughs> and Wishbone was like, uh, he was like, you know how to make beats, right? And I was like, yeah, but this ain't no beat machine. Right. So, you know, I he was like, I learned, but I didn't know we had a show that night. Okay, so, so you, you mastered it overnight, or the right, same day? It took me a few fuck ups. Okay, all right, all right. you know what? I I'm glad to see you admit that, man. Yeah, because most cats come. Oh man, I was fantastic the first day I met the machine. Mm. No, nigga, you ain't did that. Okay, mm -hmm. you fucked up some shit. Oh yeah, nah, I played the same song twice, a couple times. Uh, you know, I didn't know nothing about cues, and you know, I definitely didn't know the, the instant replay machine. I know how to make beats. I know how to do everything, but I didn't know about that particular. I understand. Situation, so. They threw some at you for brand new. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, I got on it. It was just all good after that. Okay. Now, you know, that's the one machine I, I do, I've i never owned because when we was doing that thing, we did that. We played with the fucking that. We just let the that run. Mm -hmm. I'd take a reel-to-reel backup just in case the that player didn't work. And then the re the, uh, the instant replay came out later on. That became the standard for everybody. Mm -hmm. And, uh that's a pretty, actually, that's a pretty good machine to have if you can get one. Some people still use it. No shit. Yeah. That gives you, what, everything? Gives you all the uh, the cuts and what? what, what makes I mean, it so basically, great? you just, you make your own cuts, whether it's in a computer or whatever. You just dump everything in there. So okay. all you got to do is press a button. Mm. Good. Okay. All right. Hey, folks, we learned something every day. Um, how did you become the DJ for Bone Thugs and Harmony? Uh, yeah, like I was saying. Um, I started off producing tracks for Crazy Bomb, mm -hmm. uh, doing his mixtapes, and you know things start going cool. And um, they originally offered me to go to South Korea, mm. so I was like, they asked me if I had a passport. I was like, Nah, I ain't got a passport. I'm, a, you know, I'm gonna do it out of watch. So they're like, Man, you got a pal now? So I was like, Man, you got to get you one. I was like, All right, cool. We going to Australia. In Africa, you know, such such date. So I was like, all right, cool, I'm gonna get one. And um, you know, Africa fell through. And I'm like, all right, cool, got everything set. I was still working a regular gig, selling my little weed on the side. And, you know, we get to the airport and I'm thinking I'm gonna just open up as an artist. Mm. And all of a sudden, Crazy Bone just puts down that big ass case, the instant replay machine. It was like, hey man, you know how to work this. And, you know, got tricked. Yeah, basically just got tricked into doing. Wow, wow. And, um, I, and then again, I didn't even, <clears throat> I didn't even know that I was gonna have to perform that night. Mm. So on the fifteen hour flight, hey man, you know how to work this, and you know I was like, uh, all right. So wow, that's deep shit. Yeah, but you know, I I talked to a a female that was over there, uh, named Mariah, not Carrie. Okay. And, you know, she was like, yeah, Crazy Bone really want to work with you. She, he really wants to do this. And now I'm like, all right. But I was I was hot. I was hmm. mad. What you mad for? You got a free trip to, to where we all at? I, uh, Australia. I still got a free trip to Australia. Free trip to Australia. But I'm, 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 more, I'm more on the fact that, like, man, they could have at least told me what okay. was going on. I got so, that. I got that. Um, you know, uh, Wishbone, me and him, we sitting there getting drunk after the first night I fucked up. Um, we sitting there getting drunk. He's like, man, it's going to get better. Just trust me. Like. You know, so right. I was like, all right. So after that conversation with him and Mariah, you know, I, I just really took it serious. Okay. And, you know. Now you're a master, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello, I, I, I was 10 years ago. Yeah. Wow, dude. Literally. When, when you went to Australia, that was your first time leaving the country? Uh, 
I mean, I don't count Mexico, so yeah. Okay, so yeah. how was how was I, that for you, man? I mean, you know, you brother out of watch got a passport, got yeah. your first passport stamp in yeah. another country, fifteen hour flight. Yeah. Kangaroo flying everywhere. Man, still ain't seen no kangaroo. Really. Bullshit. Yeah, still ain't seen no kangaroo, no koalas. None Come on, that. man. All, all the time I seen a kangaroo was in a um in a grocery store next to the ground beef. Uh, they had the motherfuckers cut. They were eating bullshit. Swear to God, oh. got them right there, right there in the grocery store. No shit. Did you, did you eat some? No, I want Come to on, though. Man. I'm gonna try it. Okay, all right. Yeah, try it. I, I I had an alligator one time. That motherfucker yeah. wasn't too bad. Alligator good. Alligator good. The motherfuckers niggas don't know that. See. You fuck around, you go out of Mississippi, and uh, they'll barbecue anything. I love barbecue, so I'll try anything. Mm-hmm. I ate, I never, they had snake. They had snake I next had to the barbecue. The, the, the alligator, I chose the alligator over the snake. Yeah. Yeah, they had some good barbecue sauce in that, on the alligator. He went down real good. Um, but it, it was a ground, ground uh, cable. I was, it, it? What I've seen it, it looked kind of like, like steak. Steak? Okay. Yeah, yeah, kangaroo steak. Okay, and you didn't see that while you how long was y'all over there? Uh, three and a half weeks. And you didn't see a kangaroo nowhere? Nope. See, you, see, see, that's that bullshit. People think if people will have you thinking that, well, just like I'm thinking in kangaroo. I mean, in, uh, in Australia, uh-huh. they got kangaroo in every goddamn place, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing. People come to the hood, they think they got gangbangers and dead niggas on every corner. Mm-hmm. I, I've done interviews. I took people around for interviews. Man, where the gangbangers hang at? Man, you just passed by four. They look like gangbangers. Oh man, what 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 do they do to drive by that? Man, I don't know. Okay, right. so you people have different different uh, different perceptions of different territories, and it usually is based on somebody else's vision of what they want you to see. Yeah, but my because I, I, I three and a half weeks and you didn't see no kangaroo. I've been out there. Probably about ten times. Ten times, yeah. Australia. Yeah, back and forth. Still never saw a kangaroo. Every year, I, I met more gangbangers in the kangaroo. Bullshit. <laughs> I done met Crips, Bloods, everything. Bullshit. Yeah. In fucking Australia. Australia, New Zealand, banging. What they claiming? I mean, blood, Crip. Uh, yeah, yeah. Got them met some motorcycle crews, all that. <sighs> see, see, I never would have thought I'd pull up. In uh, Australia, and see some cats uh, fla- uh, sporting colors. Yeah, no shit. We didn't. Yeah. We didn't export a gangbang like yeah. that. You know, uh, one of my one of my uh, closest partners out there. He a blood from London. Okay, but you know he's been living out there in uh, in Perth for the longest. It's Tommy. Okay, see, I'm learning something today, folks. Shout out to homie Batman P. Batman yeah. P. Yeah, out of London. Yeah, claiming Pyro, a blood. Yeah, yeah, your blood out there. I ain't, he ain't a pirate with your blood. Nah, I used to think they were both the same, but I might correct me on that too. Hey, uh, anyway, folks, I'm learning something every day. That's why I like doing this podcast. Hopefully, yeah. you learn something as well. Right now, my guest is a DJ for Bone Thugs and Harmony. They call him Position. Yes, sir. Um, been down with him for about ten years. Uh, where else did y'all travel to, man? Um, you know what? Ever since I started DJing for Bone and touring with him. I've been blessed to at least probably go to like 18 countries. No shit. Yeah. How that affected your life, man? I ain't had to work in 10 years. Wow. So you DJ for bone, get paid, broke off pretty good. My. That ain't no $150 a night to get, folks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My. <laughs> you know, I ain't had to fill out another application. So. Okay. I, hey, man. Hey, so obviously my man got some financial skills. He had he, he didn't blow his money on the road. Nah, nah. I, I mean, I blew a little bit, but you know enough to kind of kick it and chill, and you oh, know, man. still try. I'm still trying to get to that bag, though. Okay. Question: Out of all the countries you've been to, what's your favorite one? Uh, just a few. Um, it's out of like uh, Australia, New Zealand, and um, I'd probably say. Uh, Sweden. Okay. Now, people talking all this head. This Maybe day, Brazil. Okay. Yeah. Brazil. Yeah. I, I can see that. I can see yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Uh, people talking a gang ahead about if uh, if uh, Trump stays, stays the president, they're leaving the country. Mm-hmm. If Ain't nobody going nowhere. Ain't nobody going nowhere. But, but if you had to go somewhere. If I had to go somewhere. If you had to just bone up out of here. I'm, I, I'm, 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 I got my passport. I've been here. I'm going back to where I like. Where you going? Um. Was well, as hard as a motherfucker getting in Canada. They like, oh, if you got a jaywalking ticket, they they looking at you crazy. No shit. Yeah. Um, 
So I'd probably either say uh, Australia. Yeah, Australia. A lot of black folks in Australia? Um, yeah, I mean. Aborigines, right? They, yeah, they definitely got aboriginals out there. Um, but, you know, they got, it's more like, um, like Africans. Okay. And, um, you know, like they black, mm-hmm. but it ain't going to be like L.A. black, if that makes sense. Okay, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's just different. It's okay. different out there. All right. That's cool, Doc. Hey, man, we, we learn something every day. That's why I like doing this podcast. Like I said before, I learn stuff, and hopefully hopefully, I can get you to learn something, too. Um, are, you, are you are you a recording artist as well? Are you just DJ or producer? No. Well, I'm definitely a recording artist and a producer. I started off being a, a, a recording artist and a producer. And once I met Crazy Bone, I actually met Crazy Bone in 2006. I met him first. Okay. Uh, through a female named Tanya Duche. And uh, he heard my tracks. And him and uh, Keith G, I think they got the track number two, and they was like, we want this one. Mm. It's a track called Life is a Lesson. Not Life is a Lesson Learned. It's a crack, uh, track called Welcome to the Alley. Okay. And, um, you know, they got on it that night. And ever since then, Keith G like, hey, man, bring some of them beats to the studio. I'm okay. like, all right, cool. Now I got a question for you. Yes, sir. When you when you do a beat, when you do a beat for somebody like Bone Thugs and Harmony, mm-hmm. Do you uh, split the publishing? You keep all the publishing. You keep the writers. How do you? How do you? You know, t- tell folks how you had how you prefer to do your business. Everybody do their thing different. Some people say, "Man, give me a thousand, five thousand, twenty thousand for the beat. I'm out." Do you prefer to keep your beat or keep equity in your beat or what? Um, when in the in the beginning, I was naive to a lot of shit. I was mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, okay." And then uh, Crazy Bone would uh, you know pay me, you know, some money for tracks later on, mm-hmm. you know, but it's like, now I'm on my business. I'm like, no, nah, I need 50% of this. No, you I need go. my publishing. I need, you know, and that cash. Okay. I thought yeah. that, that, that's what I wanted to hear, Doc. That's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. You know, sometimes, hey man, sometimes you get into the game, you got to go into the game backwards just to get in, but you turn your ass around and make the game work for you. Yeah. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Uh, in so many ways, uh, Crazy Bone, Bone Thugs and Harmony is, is the ones that's putting me in the game. So when I do something for them, you know, it's pretty much out of love because it gave me the opportunity to meet people, you know, like upgrade yourself. And, you know, so with them, you know, I, I don't even really question, I don't even really trip because, you know, I got the opportunity to work with a whole lot of other people and, and make money. Okay. Okay. Who else you work with? Um, let me see. Um, so I did a lot. Um, starting off with some with some old school uh working on the homie primes album i done worked with rapping forte mm. i done worked with spice one um long time ago i did something with uh cocaine and uh corrupt um joe moses okay um a, a long time ago man before he got put on um I actually did a track uh the homie Kaz at the time had um pulled in Nipsey Hustle before he was Nipsey Hustle. And you know, we ended up doing a track on the uh Dr. Dre tribute, which was uh still DRE. Okay. And um, you know, I got I got to work with a lot of people and then once I started working with Bone, it was Pretty much on the road. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I had to I had to do a technical thing. I just noticed my computer. I must have kicked out the plug by accident, mm-hmm. and uh, that some bitch was about to cut off. I don't want oh, to cut. I had yeah. to, so I really give y'all that a, a little rolling noise, <laughs> and they get cut off so, completely. Yeah. Just good interview. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, folks, you live with my man Position DJ for Bone Thugs and Harmony, producer DJ Extraordinaire, travel the world. Man, you know, I know that traveling thing. Man, gives you a different perspective on on life, don't it? I mean, yeah. you know, on the hood, everything. Definitely. Um, I can I, I ask you that question. <laughs> yeah, you ask me what you want. It's all good. How's the pussy out there? <laughs> uh, you know, um, great. <laughs> <laughs> great. Um, I miss the road. I miss, you know, the, the, the traveling and all the, the, the benefits of the road. You know, that, that was a great time for me, man. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, like, when I first, first started going out there, let's say my first trip to Australia, 
it tripped me out because again, I'm I'm just this dude out of Wise, California. Mm-hmm. And uh our first show was Perth. I think it was Perth. It was probably the second show, but then I'm thinking, no, nobody know who I am. Okay. But Life is a Lesson Learned had already came out, so all the Bone fans already seen it. Okay. So I go on stage and you just hear a position. I'm like, <laughs> oh shit, all right. And um, you know, go to the clubs and I drank like heavy. So once I started drinking, I started getting friendly and conversating. Hey, what's happening? Whatever, whatever. And you know, they they hear the LA accent. Right. And first thing, oh, you know Snoop Dogg? Nah, I ain't never met him. At that time, I ain't, I ain't never met him. Okay. Still ain't got to chop it up with him like that. But you know, you start just yeah, man. I, you know, I'm from over here, whatever. And they just want to hear you talk. Mm. So I'm like, you go to Australia or you know South Korea or whatever. You man, you can stay in there and get some pussy. It's, <laughs> It's like that. Yeah, you, if you can't you get a female out there, it's a problem. I tell any young man, if you can if you can be blessed to travel and get paid to do what you love, whether it be music or whatever the case may be, if you can take advantage of that man and just travel the world. I mean, I was able to go to a few countries myself mm-hmm. at a at a young dude, man, and you know, it's just it just it just it just changes your perspective on life itself. You realize the world ain't just your hood, okay? Yeah. And once you realize that, it, it changes your perspective on how you think, see things, see other people, and how you see yourself. Yeah. You know, and uh, you didn't know babies that did, did you? No. Okay. No, nah, I'm, I'm not. Real, real life, I was I was really out there just trying to learn this new craft. Okay. And, okay. and really trying to um, learn the road. So I got to meet a lot of cool people. Okay. And I mean, literally from the first day I went to Australia, I'm friends with today. Mm. So I got to really go out there, kick it, learn the culture. And every every country I go to, I try to learn the culture. Okay. Um, what, now, you're on tour with who? Besides Bontha, who's on the show? Uh, at that time, it was just us. No shit. Yeah, literally just us. Wow. A yeah. bigger crowd. Um, You know, it would range at the time. It would range anywhere from like, Anywhere from like a thousand to about like seven, eight thousand. Oh shit! At, at that tour, okay. But um, you know, I've been blessed to rock crowds up to like fifty, sixty thousand with them dudes. Okay, okay. You know, I actually, uh, I actually did the show where they brought Easy E on the hologram, mm. and I stepped mm. back when DJ Yeller did his thing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, so I, you know, I just got the big kid and just fan out. Wow. And, and watch everything. And just, you know, that's what make me appreciate, you know, the blessing that I, I got. Wow. That, that's, that's a true blessing. How, how, did, how did the fans respond to the hologram? Oh, yeah. They loved it, man. It was cool. It was different. Um, from this side, it was different because, you know, you got to look at this little projector thing here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's real calculated. Mm-hmm. And stuff like that, because you don't want to run into the person. Okay, you feel me? But it was it was cool, okay. man. It was it was real dope. And um, you know, another thing, the fans don't get to see the you know the magic behind the curtains, right? Because we had to, we had to edit the show. Uh, it was me, uh, Lazy Bone, Steve Lobel, Tamika, and you know we had to conjure up some just to make everything fit mm. five minutes before the show. Mm. So how did how did you get how did you get thrown in so late? Um, you know, because just going through ideas, man, and it's not just that it it happens a lot. Okay, just going through ideas, and if uh, especially you know, I I don't know Tamika like that, but if she's like, yeah, this don't fit right, you know, you gotta make it right. Okay. Well, so. you know what, man, and I tell people all the time, when you're doing a show, unless the whole crowd was at rehearsal, mm-hmm. even if you fuck up, nobody know you fucked up but you. Yeah. Okay. Only time they know you fucked up is when you go, oh, damn. Well, nobody, if you miss a step, if you fall and bust your ass and get up funky enough, nobody know that wasn't part of the goddamn show. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I get that, Doc. All right, folks, you were, you've been in it. You just listened to my man, Position, from Bone Thugs and Harmony. We got some more folks coming up shortly. Right about now, much love to you, Doc. Thank you for, man. Thank you Appreciate for coming you. to the show. Definitely an honor. Shout out to Kali. Shout out to my boy. Upgrade, man. Even giving me this opportunity, you know, come sit with legends like yourself. Appreciate you having on the show, man. Thank Much you. love, folks. We out of here, folks. Lonzo, the Godfather, of West Coast hip hop, kicking it with my man, Position, the DJ for Bone Thugs and Harmony. We'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs>